Hello everyone, this is Lorcahol, and in this video I'm going to be sharing my 3.15 Trickster Exsanguinate League Starter. In the background you are watching a tier 16 map with some really scary mods. I've done everything in my power to simulate the nerfs and I've actually deliberately gone way overboard with it. You're probably thinking, Dot was nerfed. This build's going to be bad because Exsanguinate's a Dot build. But wait, I decided to test this on a two link. What you're watching now is literally Exsanguinate and Chain. No other links. And as you can see, it's doing absolutely fine. On top of that, I removed all my cluster jewels. I'm simulating a level 80 character. I have 15 points unallocated that would have been into cluster jewels and it's doing fine. So in 3.15, even with the nerfs, this build is going to do great. Included in this build guide is going to be a path of building with a leveling tree that shows you which points to allocate when as you're leveling. It's also going to include a spreadsheet with the gems that you need to buy along the way. And it'll show you, okay, in act two, you need to get this gem from this person after doing this quest. Also, there's going to be a shopping list. So instead of having to type in all the items you need, you just click a link and it'll open it up straight for you. So how does this build work? I have done videos on this build in the past, but just to go over it briefly again, Exsanguinate, it shoots out this spray of blood like this, and then we link it with chain and then anything it hits, it kind of propagates throughout the pack and just leads to really, really excellent clear. This is also a damage over time skill. So there is an initial hit damage, but then it deals physical damage over time. Let's go over some of the skill gems. I'm not gonna go over every single support. You can see that in Path of Building, but I'm gonna explain the active skill gems just so you can understand what everything is doing. First up, of course, we have Exsanguinate. This is our primary damage dealing skill. This just hits and then spreads. Then we have Flame Dash and Smoke Mine. I know what you're thinking, Smoke Mine is dead. Why am I using it? Well, I like to use it. It's very nice for things like harvest. So you'll throw it behind you, run over to the harvest, click, click, click. Monster starts spawning, hit D, teleport away. Also very nice for boss encounters like Cirrus to dodge some of his attacks. So I'm still using it for that. And then Flame Dash is just obviously a movement skill. Next, we have a Void Sphere setup. I'm using Void Sphere linked with Hex Touch, Vulnerability, and Culling Strike. So when you cast this, everything gets sucked into the middle of it. They also get cursed with vulnerability, which increases the physical damage that they take. And Culling Strike means that anything with 10% life or below that gets hit by the Void Sphere, including bosses, by the way, will be instantly killed. On top of that, we have a Corrupting Fever setup. The way this works is it's a skill that you activate and then it lasts for a period of time and then Anything that the Exsanguinate hits will cause the monster that it hits to have a Corrupting Blood debuff applied to it. And you can stack this. This just increases our DPS overall. And generally you only have to cast it once per map because after spending 275 life, it automatically refreshes. And I didn't mention it, but Exsanguinate costs life to cast, but that is not a problem. I will go over that when we look at the Ascendancy. Next up, we have our aura setup. We have Pride, Herald of Purity, Malevolence, and Enlighten. There's quite a few nodes on the tree that we are allocating to reduce mana reservation. So you might not be able to use all three of these right at the start, but while you're leveling, you'll easily be able to equip Malevolence and Herald of Purity, and that'll increase your damage overall. Then once you get a higher level and allocate those notables on the tree, you will be able to add in the third aura, well, the second aura on top of the Herald of Purity. And last but not least, we have a Petrified Blood setup. This allows us to go on low life. So when I press Q, which is my Petrified Blood, it puts us on low life. Again, I'm not gonna explain exactly how this works. This is kind of advanced. If you're a new player, I might not use this, but being on low life allows us to allocate Pain Attunement, which gives us 30% more spell damage. This is an insane DPS boost for this build. 
I normally do not run around maps with my petrified blood on, but if I get to a boss and I feel like I just need a bit more damage, I will just hit that button and my DPS goes up by 30% more. Hopping over to the passive tree, as you can see, like I mentioned, there is a guided leveling process. So you can see 10 points, 20 points, 34 points, and it leads you all the way up to level 95. I've also included a tree with cluster jewels. So if you can acquire these while leveling, great. If you can't, no worries. You can do something slightly different and head down this way first. This is going to be more of a phase acrobatic dodge version of the tree. As you can see, once we get to level 90, we're going to be allocating Wind Dancer and Freedom of Movement. In the past, I have done a block based version of this, but I figured let's do the dodge version. It's a bit easier to play, a bit easier to understand, and it's a really nice defensive version of the tree. As I mentioned, with the reservation, we are allocating charisma. This gives us reduced reservation of skills. Also leadership, more reservation over here, 4%. And then up at the top, influence. There's also another 4% reduced reservation of skills over here. The rest of the tree is mainly just life and energy shield, life and energy shield, life, and then damage over time things. So we have growth and decay, which is damage over time. Also, we have the cluster jewel setup, which is a physical damage large cluster. This is where a lot of our damage is going to come from. And certain notables like Furious Assault and Master the Fundamentals, these are nice and increase our damage. By the way, if you want to craft a nice physical large cluster jewel, all you need is a single jagged fossil and it's pretty easy to get a three notable large cluster but this is compared to many other cluster jewels very very easy to roll we're going to be getting more damage over time from these physical damage over time medium clusters i'm not entirely sure what these will cost next league it might be a bit expensive but it might also be really cheap depending on what the meta is but we can get more damage over time from things like flow of life and vile reinvigoration and student of decay these things all increase our damage over time. Having a quick look at the Ascendancy, we're gonna be first equipping Patient Reaper. This gives us life recovery, ES recovery, mana recovery, and increased recovery of life mana and energy shield if you've killed an enemy affected by your dot recently. This is what allows us to sustain our life when using Exsanguinate, which cost life to cost. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to cost with all the mana multiplier nerfs or increases, but once you allocate Patient Reaper, you will absolutely be fine sustaining your life. After that, we're going to go for Prolonged Pain, which is 20% more damage over time and increased skill effect duration and reduce damage taken from damage over time. After that, we grab Ghost Dance, which is another little defensive layer. And last but not least, Escape Artist. This is another defensive layer that we will be allocating. As for Bandits, we are going to be grabbing two passive points. However, while leveling, you might want to grab Alira's just so that you can get the resist. This kind of gives you a bit of slack to worry less about finding resists on your gear. So I will often take that and then respec my bandits. But otherwise, if you're comfortable with it, just go for kill all the bandits for the two extra points. As for Pantheons, take what you want. I usually go Soul of the Brine King and Yugal or Rislatha or Ralakesh. This is up to you. See what you feel is good, but Many of these are going to be good for this build. Now, looking at the items, I'm going to do this in POB because the items I have equipped in game are slightly different. Main thing we want is Cold Iron Point. This gives us plus three level of all physical spell skill gems. This is a huge DPS increase for Exsanguinate. If we equip two, we get 
plus six level of exsanguinate. So even before equipping something like Empower, we can have a level 26 exsanguinate. This is pretty much best in slot unless you go for some like ultra expensive crafted Fizz dot wand, which don't worry about it. Cold Iron Point is amazing. Crown of the Inward Eye is also a great helmet because it gives us not only increased life, mana, and energy shield, but transfiguration of soul, body, and mind. What do these do? Essentially, the more max energy shield we have, that increases our spell damage. Transfiguration of body is the more max life we have applies to attack damage, and increase and reductions to mana also apply to damage at 30% of their value. So this is not only a great defensive helm, it's also a great offensive helm. As for the rest of the gear, body armor is just life and resistance, gloves, life and resistance, amulet, life and resistance, and we are anointing Vanquisher, which is on the far left side of the tree. This gives us 40% increased physical damage. Exsanguinate is physical damage, so this is great. And it crushes enemies, which essentially applies physical exposure. So enemies that are crushed have physical damage reduction reduced by 15%. Rings, life resistance. Life resistance, belt, life resistance. It's very straightforward, as you can see. The only thing is that at series step is gonna be a unique that we're using because it increases our chance to dodge spell hits. It has good movement speed. It has good life. It has good evasion rating. So these boots are perfect for this version of the build. As for flasks, we have panicked divine life flask. We have a quicksilver flask and a quartz flask. These you can play around with in 3.15 to your liking. It's a bit hard to say at this point what's going to be best with all the flask changes, but for now, these are good. As for Witchfire Brew, damage over time has been removed from this, so this is not going to be providing as much damage over time. However, the Despair Curse Aura effect is going to help our DPS. But one thing, before you get a Witchfire Brew, make sure to first allocate Whispers of Doom. Otherwise, what happens is that this Despair Curse Aura will override the vulnerability from your Void Sphere. And that actually leads to a dip in DPS. So if you want to use this, make sure to first allocate Whispers of Doom on the tree. As for the other flask, I'm kind of leaving it open. I had a Rumi's in here, but Rumi's is kind of not amazing anymore <laughs> and also we're not going block on this so i'll have a look around and maybe i'll update this before i release it but keep it open see what you need you probably are going to need some kind of freeze removal or ignite removal or curse removal flask going over some of the pros and cons well the pros this build has amazing clear it is super fun and easy to play it is a really cheap build and it's very beginner friendly. This is none of the spell slinger shenanigans, rip spell slinger. There's nothing complicated. It's just right click and things explode. As for some of the cons, the single target is decent. It is not incredible. Do not play this if you are planning on doing Cirrus carries or anything like this. I have done Cirrus 7 on this build, but it did struggle in 3.14 with some of the upper tiers of bosses. Like I said, the single target, it's good enough if you are just running T16s, you'll be absolutely fine. It kills those bosses very quickly. But yeah, Maven, uh, I don't know if you could pull off Maven on this unless you invested a lot into it. If you did, yeah, sure, you could definitely do Maven. But as a league starter, if that's what you're going for, I would not recommend this build. If you have any other questions about this build, just be sure to ask in the comments or DM me on Discord. I have no problem, but this one is pretty straightforward. It's pretty strong and I had a ton of fun with it in 3.14. So I, I recommend it fully, even for 3.15 with all the nerfs. That's going to be it for this video, folks. Have a great day, everyone. Stay safe. I will be streaming a lot of the 3.15 launch on Twitch. So Go over there, link in description, give me a follow, and if you want to hang out this weekend, come do that. All right, have a wonderful day, everyone. Stay safe, bye-bye.
ranching exile. You're making me nervous. 